In this video, we will look at the most searched formulas and functions in Excel. Let's look at the data set that we have. It starts with the first name, last name, the student ID, the department, marks in various subjects, which includes math, computers, finance, physics, chemistry, and English, and finally the total marks. Now in this companion Excel, if you look at the second sheet, these are the different formulas that we are going to look at today. The COUNTIF, SUMIF, VLOOKUP, IF STATEMENT, CONCATENATE, SUBTRACTION, ROUND, INDEX, MATCH and the INDEX MATCH function. Let's start with COUNTIF. Now this is a scenario where you might use a COUNTIF where a question comes like how many students are there in the computers department. Okay. And I will show you how we can apply this formula. So equal to count if the first parameter is the range where we need to search. So since we are going to look at the department column, the range would be E1 to E10. And the second parameter is the criteria. Now criteria means what are we searching for? In our case, we are looking for all the records that have the department as computers. So there are two ways to do it. First way is to hard code the value as computers. Okay. And if I press enter, it has counted the number of occurrences. So computers comes here one, two, three times. Now we can see that the result is matching. Now let's look at the second way. Now this cell is F13, right? So instead of hard coding computers, I can even give as F13 and it will give the same value. Now let's look at a second application of COUNTIF. That is, if you need to know how many students scored 80 plus in math. Let's see how we can do it equal to count if now here the range is f1 to f10 or it could even be f2 to f10 but doesn't matter f1 to f10 and what are we searching for we are searching for any values that are greater than 80 right so this is how we do that let's see if the value is right there is one value greater than 80, two value, that's it, right? So this is how you do count if. Now let's move on to the second formula, which is the sum if statement. So one application of sum if function would be to say, add the chemistry marks of students who scored 75 plus, right? So based on a criteria, we are trying to add some values. Now let's see how we can implement it equal to sum if. Now here the range, right? What is the range that we are looking for? In this case, it is the chemistry marks. That is J1 to J10 comma. And if you see second parameter is the criteria. The second criteria is greater than 75 and we get the value 689. So if you see the formula here in the format, you can see there can be three parameters, right? One is a range where we are trying to apply the criteria and there's a third parameter, which is the sum range. So by default, it will add the values in this initial range that we have given that satisfies this criteria. Okay. But there are some cases where we will need to apply the criteria on a range, but do the sum in a different range, right? So we'll come to such an example. Now let's see how we can find the sum of total marks in the commerce department. Now you can see that the criteria is going to be applied in the department column, right? And the criteria being the number of rows having the department as commerce. But however, the sum is going to be applied in the total marks. Okay, so we are just going to add up the total marks 
of all the records that are having the department as commerce. Now let's see how we can achieve that equal to sum f. The initial range is where we are going to apply the criteria. So we have to select E1 to E10 and the criteria is commerce. So either you can hard code the value commerce. In this case, I'm just going to select this cell which has the value commerce and the third one is the sum range. I'm going to select L1 to L10 and you can see the sum has come to 1376. Essentially, it is just the sum of these three values. If you can see here, the sum is 1376. Now let's move on to VLOOKUP. Now what is the application of VLOOKUP? Say for example, you know a student's first name, Jeff. And based on this first name, if you want to look up what is the corresponding department that Jeff is on, then you can use VLOOKUP. So let's dive straight into the formula equal to VLOOKUP. Now there are four parameters. The first one is the lookup value. What is the value based on which you are trying to match the first column in our data set? In our case, it is the first name Jeff. Or you can either hard code the value Jeff or give the cell that contains the value Jeff. I'm giving the cell E17. The second is the table array where we need to do our lookup. In our case, I'm just going to select the entire data set, comma, and what is the corresponding column where, you know, Excel has to look for the department. This is the column index number. So if you see here, the department is the fourth column in our table, right? So the column index number is four. And the fourth parameter is uh, to tell Excel whether we want to do a approximate match or an exact match. In our scenario, we have to go with exact match. So just give the value false, press enter. Now you can see Excel has returned the department as signs. Right, so Jeff is in the science department. The same thing can be applied to get the student ID of Jeff. The only change is to update the column index number, right? So instead of searching in the column number four for department, we would now need to search column number three for student ID, right? So if you change four to three, you can see it has found the corresponding student ID. That's it for VLOOKUP. A uh, very simple concept, but very useful in dashboards, reports and all that. So it is essential that you know about VLOOKUP and how to implement it. So let's move on to the next formula, which is percentage. Okay, let's say we get a question. What would be Martha's total if she scored 10% more marks in math? Now let's look at Martha's record. You can see she has scored 78 in math and has a current total of 445. So the question is, if she scored 10% more marks in math, what would be her new total? So the formula is equal to the current total, which is L8 plus the delta, right? Which is 10% of the math marks. That is math marks is in F8 into 10%. You can see this would be the total marks. So you can see that the percentage is directly applied as a value, right? 10% as a value. And there is no different formula to apply the percentage. Now let's move on to the if statement. Let's look at this question. Did Elon Musk fail for chemistry? Assuming the pass mark is 50. So you can see Elon Musk he has scored 83 for chemistry. So you definitely know, okay, if the pass mark is 50, he has passed. But let's see how we can apply that in a formula. Equal to if J3 less than 50, comma. So that was the logical test, right? That was the first parameter of the if statement. The second parameter is what to show or what to output if the value is true. Now we are just going to hard fail. The second value, what if? the condition or the logical test is false. Now, if it is not less than 50, Musk has passed. So we give the value pass, press enter, and you can see that, yes, Musk has passed for chemistry. That is how you write a if statement. Now let's look at concatenate. What is the full name of Mark? Concatenation is very simple. 
equal to concatenate or concat you can go with either of them microsoft is actually deprecating the concatenate formula soon so go with concat if you are in newer versions of excel that is 2016 and above if not you can just go with concatenate equal to concat and we are going to select the first value that we need to concatenate give a comma now i want to give a delimiter which would be a space so this is the second string in our concat formula comma and the last name i'm going to select the cell c10 close the formula press enter and you can see you have concatenated the values let's look at how to do subtraction how much is the difference in total marks between tim and bill now you can see tim is having a mark of 492 and bill is having a mark of 480 right so we're just going to find the difference between the marks so formula is simple equal to tim's mark total mark is in l9 we select that minus bill's mark is in l2 press enter and you can see that the value is 12. now let's move on to the round function now the specific case here is round off elon's average percentage to the nearest integer okay so let's go straight into the formula we give the round function now we need to find the average of his marks right for that we will give the function average and we are going to select the cells f3 to k3 this is to find the average of all his subject marks and now if you see the round function right the there are two parameters one is the number the number in our case is the average marks and the number of digits to which you have to round it to so in our case we are just rounding it to the nearest integer right so we we will just give the value zero press enter so it seems the average is 80. now let's go to the index function and one of the use case would be say pick the name carnegie from the table above so based on you know column and row position we are trying to fetch the name carnegie okay let's see how we can do that so let's go straight into the formula equal to index the first parameter is the array so we are going to give the entire array b1 l10 the next one is the row number in our case to get carnegie the row number is seven right so we'll give the row number as seven comma and the column number it is actually optional but in our case to get the value carnegie we have to give that column number which is two one two right we need the last name so it is in column number two so we give the value two close the formula press enter right so from a table by knowing the row number and column number we are able to fetch the corresponding value in that location so that was the index function now let's move on to the match function in which position does this student id come in the student id column so if you see here we want to find out in which position does this student id comes now let's look at the formula equal to match i can hard code the value but i'm just go ahead going ahead and selecting e24 which has the corresponding student id that we are trying to search for comma the second parameter is the lookup array this cannot be a table it has to be a single column so i'm going to select d1 to d10 the match type in our case has to be the exact match so i'm just going ahead and giving zero press enter and you can see excel has given a result that this value comes in the seventh row you can see here this is the seventh row and yes this is this was our input value the next one is index match this is a kind of a more advanced vlookup which will help you to look up to the left or the right of a table vlookup has a limitation that the lookup will be based on matching the value in the first column of the range and it can only look up towards the right of that data range in index that's not the case you can even do a lookup say based on a particular student id 
you can look up the corresponding last name or you can even look up a corresponding mark which is towards the right hand side of our lookup column okay so now let's see how you can implement the index match now let's see how you can find the last name of a student with this id okay now i'll tell you the logic it has two steps involved first we need to find the position of this id in this column okay now we already went through that so how did we do that earlier equal to match what are we trying to match we are trying to match this id right comma where are we trying to match it we are trying to match it in this array okay now we got the position as 7 now the thing is we need to find the corresponding last name that is carnegie right now how will we do that and that is where we will use the index function so now we have to again include the index function so index now in index the first parameter is the array now where are we going to look up in this case we are going to look up in the last name right so you select c1 to c10 comma the second parameter was the row num so we have already got the row num 7 if you remember when we gave the match function so our formula is essentially complete and there is no other parameter that we have to give we have given both the mandatory parameters so you can just close the formula press enter and you have got carnegie okay i know it is a bit confusing so let's look at one more example what is the computer mark of the student with this id so let's see what is that tim cook right this is the id we want to find what is the computer mark for the student we know the student id right so now we have to find the position of the student id we will use the match function match the lookup value so we have the lookup value as this we give that lookup array so the lookup array will be student id column okay you can see that the result is nine that is the ninth row contains this id now let's bring in the index function index the array now the thing is where do we have to look up it is in the computers column right so you select g1 to g10 comma and you just close the formula enter and you get the marks as 94 great i know it is a difficult concept i will go into more detail in my future videos but I hope you understood how you can implement index match. We have covered the top 11 most searched functions and formulas in Excel. If this video helped you in any way, please consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day ahead.